Hey, I'm Axel for HitFilm, here with another tutorial discussing screen graphics. In my last tutorial, we talked about how to create the look of CCTV footage. And today, we're going to look at tracking movement within that footage and creating a reticle that will dynamically follow that movement through the frame. You can download the project files you'll need from the description down below, and let's jump in. So this technique could work with CCTV footage as a motion tracker or facial recognition system, but I'm going to take more of a satellite footage approach and create a targeting system. Our project already has the footage, a reticle overlay, and our color grading on the timeline so we can get started on the tracking. If you want to learn more about getting the right look, our earlier CCTV tutorial covers all of the grading used here. Also, I'm in HitFilm 4 Pro, but you can easily follow along in HitFilm 4 Express as well. Everything we are doing today is built on a very simple motion track, so that is our first step. Open the Satellite 3 layer and add a new track. With our new track added, drag the search box onto the person, who henceforth shall be known as Target. Adjust the feature box so it just fits over him, and increase the search area box a bit to make sure we catch the movement. And let's track forward. By the way, don't let the name of this layer fool you. I didn't actually task a satellite to film this footage. Also, satellites usually orbit a bit higher than 10 meters, but it serves our purpose. With the tracking completed, let's create a new point layer to apply our track to, as we always do. Name it Target, then move back into our tracking data, set the layer to our target point, and apply. Now we have a point sitting right on our target's head following his every move. Let's create the hash marks for our reticle next to make it a bit more radical. A radical reticle. Yeah, to do this, let's create a new plane and name it horizontal. Leave its width at 1920, but set the height to 7 and the color to white and click OK. Now we have a thin horizontal line running across our footage. Open its transform properties and unlink the scale, then set the X scale to 300. This makes the line three times the width of our frame, so it can move a long ways back and forth to follow the tracking without the ends entering the frame. Parent it to our target and reset its position. Now duplicate this layer and rename the copy to Vertical. On the vertical one, let's adjust the rotation 90 degrees so the name makes sense. And now, the crosshairs follow our target wherever he goes. There's no escape, my friend. Next, we want to hide most of these lines, leaving only the bits that actually line up with the reticle. To do this, we will use the set mat effect. Create a new plane, let's do this one gray, though the color doesn't really matter, and name it Matte. His real name is Matthew, but only his mom calls him that. Set the size to match the timeline, and hit OK. Now, we want to use a mask to remove the area outside the reticle. Create a new camera, and we get a clear marking of the center of our frame. Lower the opacity of this plane so we can see, select our rectangular mask tool, and then drag your mask on the plane from the center point while holding Option until the mask is just inside the numbers. Now create a second mask using the same technique and stop a bit inside the reticle. The distance between these two masks will define the length of your hash marks. On the second mask, set the blend mode to subtract, then increase the opacity of the layer to 100%. That's the shape we need, so let's bake it into our layer by right-clicking and selecting Make Composite Shot. Name it Matte, Senior, move the masks with the layer, and click OK. Switch back to our satellite tracker timeline, hide our matte senior layer, and we can use a set matte effect on our horizontal plane. Drag it on, set the layer to matte senior, and we are good to go. Now copy that effect and paste it onto the vertical plane as well. Now these line layers move up and down and side to side to follow the target, but since they are 300% wider than the frame, they can move anywhere they need to, and they'll still be in that visible line. That finishes off the reticle, so now we will shift gears to the tracking box. This uses a familiar technique, actually. Create a new plane, this time make it plain white, a plain plane, and name it box. 
Select the rectangular mask and drag a mask from the center, holding Option to pull from the center, and Shift to constrain it to a square. Make it large enough to fit our target. This time, instead of dragging a second mask, duplicate the mask we just created. On the duplicate, set the expansion of the mask to minus 2 to make it a tiny bit smaller than the first one. Then set the blend to subtract. Reduce the opacity of this mask to around 75 to brighten up the center area a bit, and then parent the box layer to our target point. Right click and reset its transform controls to zero them out to the point and line up our box. And that wraps up the tracking effects, but I did want to add a label just to finish off the shot and to show you two more cool tricks. So let's start by adding some text. Select the text tool and drag a text box over on the right. In the text panel, select a sans serif font like Arial or Helvetica, make it bold, set the size to 30 and the color to white, and type TARGET ACQUIRED in all caps because capital letters make it look more high tech. Adjust the text box to just fit the words. Then drag another text box down below, about the same size. This time, set the text size to 18 and the color to red, then type ESTABLISHING LOCK dot dot dot, again in all caps. Because even now, after all these seconds, all caps still make it look cool. I want the second line to blink on and off, to add a bit more movement and indicate processing by the computer, and for that we will use the flicker effect. Now, if you are using HipFilm 4 Express, this effect requires the Starter Pack add-on, which seriously has tons of awesome effects for only $10. Do yourself a favor and grab it. You can still make the text blink with the free version. It will just take a bit more work because you have to keyframe the opacity of the text layer manually. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add the Flicker effect and set the Randomize to zero so we get consistent timing to the flicker. Then I will reduce the frequency to slow down the blink to around 2.4 and increase the amplitude to 2. This creates the blink, but the flicker effect only changes the brightness of the layer, not its opacity. However, when the brightness drops, we get black, and you can easily remove black from a layer, how? By setting its blend mode to screen, or add, but since this is in fact a screen, I feel obligated to use the screen blend. And there's trick one, using the flicker effect to control the visibility of a layer. Now, let's create a link between the text and the tracking box. For this, we will use the lightning and electricity effect, but first we need a layer to apply it to. Create a new grade, name it Link, then add the lightning effect to it. Open the branches controls and set quantity to zero, then zero out the wave scale and twitch scale as well. Remove the glow by setting its opacity to zero, then add a bit of core feather to smooth the line out, about 0.3. Now open the start and end controls. Set the width in both to 0.5. Then for the end, adjust its position so it sits just beside your text layers. The text and this end of the link are going to be stationary. To make the other end of the link follow the tracking box, we will use the Use Layer property to select our track layer then adjust the position to offset that end and align it with our box. You can link it to the box wherever you want, and since the box is already following the tracking point, our link will lock right onto it. And there is trick number two, using lightning to create a straight line between moving points. And that wraps up this tutorial, though you could certainly carry on working on this effect. If you look at the included composite shot showing the finished example of this shot, you can see some of these options that I'm discussing in action. You might want to duplicate these text layers and replace them later on with other text, indicating that target is locked. Don't forget to use all caps if you do so. Maybe you want to make the box around the target go red as well once the lock is acquired. I would use the fill color effect for that and just keyframe it to become active when you need it. But for now, my time is up. Thanks very much for watching, and as mentioned before in our CCTV tutorial, we do have a tutorial looking at how to take these screen effects and apply them to an actual screen coming up. So please subscribe to be notified about that screen replacement tutorial when it comes. Until then, toodle pip.